very happy to discuss open manufacturing today with Julia. And perhaps some words to myself. So I'm David Boss from Bosch Connected Industry. Um, I'm responsible for um, standardization, open source, and IP strategy. And um, I'm active in uh, several different organizations like the Open Manufacturing Platform. I'm in the board of the Industrial Digital Twin Association, and I'm also product owner for Semantics in Catena X. Yeah, perhaps Julian, yeah, you want to introduce you. yourself? Thank you, Birgit. Yeah, my name is Julian Backhaus. Um, I'm working at BMW Group IT, um, responsible for several teams, including IoT and edge computing. Um, and I'm also the BMW representative uh, in the OMP org team, organization team. Yeah, before we start with our uh, presentation today, um, we have a little poll prepared for you. Um, and we would like to ask you, um, is open manufacturing already on your agenda? Um, is it? Maybe not. Maybe yes. Uh, maybe it is uh, in the future. Um, and we're really interested to see uh, what are your expectations about the topic. Um, and we will talk about it later. Yeah. So then let, let's kick it off. <laughs> um, I, I will start today. Yeah, so um, today we will talk uh, not only um, about open manufacturing uh, in general, but of course also the reason um, for that. Um, because simply installing industrial IoT software is not, not the solution um, to return benefits um, from your project. Um, we will talk a little bit about uh, what you should do to be successful um, in industrial IoT. Um, yeah, and so yeah, let's, let's start with it. Yeah, um, as you can see, also from BMW point of view, um, as a manufacturer, you have certain uh, expectations uh, regarding digital transformation. For example, with connecting um, your uh, factory, you want to increase your output. Um, as you can see, according to some surveys, it's around 80% that manufacturers want to gain there. Um, but of course, also using innovative technologies like AI, um, you would like to get an output boost uh, per worker, um, but on, also on the other side, you want to leverage cloud technologies and cloud applications um, with your, uh, within your supply uh, chain. Um, of course, there are big expectations, as I said, um, from the point of a manufacturer, um, but um, of course also these uh, expectations are faced with some challenges in today's digital world. Um, in the first place, you have data silos. Um, that, of course, when you have to connect all your proprietary application, that will slow down your process of transformation. Um, of course, you have a lot of feature trees, IT and OT systems, uh, which of course that limit uh, your agility, um, and also is a barrier against the digital transformation you usually uh, try to enforce. Um, of course, also you have to qualify your workforce. Um, in software, in cloud technologies, and so on. Um, and of course, uh, your existing equipment in the brownfield uh, usually have so long life cycles um, that that also uh, is a burden to uh, enable a uh, quick uh, adoption. So as, as you can see here from, from Forrester, uh, the impact is um, that about uh, 70 uh, uh, persons of of the projects in, in IoT or PLCs in IoT fail, um, and I would say that's that's a quite a large number. Um, and of course, you want, don't want to be at seventy percent. You want to be at thirty percent um, that are scale into uh, production and bring the benefit uh, benefits you plan to do. Um, but the question is, do we, do we need a better technology or how do we um, face that, uh, that problem? And also according to, to surveys, um, it's not the te technology that is missing. Um, it's rather than uh, the problem to scale out your, your PLCs um, in the real world. Um, so what you can do there? Um, to improve your scalability is from, from our point of view, also speaking speaking about, um, out of the manufacturing platform, for example, but also other consortiums, um, is to uh, do a collaborative innovation and standardization. 
because what you, what you of course need are practical solutions uh, which really solve real world problems um, and are not some um, um, you know more academic um, solutions. Um, you have to real uh, real world problems you want to solve, um, and together with other companies, um, you really have the possibility to work together um, to. Benefit from the cross-company uh, collaboration, um, and also that governed, uh, for example, uh, by by our processes. Um, then, if if you are doing that right, uh, and if you we are working together, of course, in, in that case, um, we are quite confident that we can be at that thirty percent that are <laughs> successful. Thirty. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and of course that has a longer history on that, so I will hand over to Birgit. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, as Julian just said, it's not about technology that these projects fail. And uh, I think it is very interesting to see what happened in the last uh, two years, especially in 2020, so in the mid of the pandemic, COVID pandemic. So it's really interesting to see. So perhaps I start with Platform Industry 4.0. So it's with it celebrated its 10th birthday this year. So 2011, all of this started in a way. And also Bosch was active from the very, very beginning. Uh, but uh, as Julian said, uh, what was missing in a way was, um, yeah, uh, so, uh, so good, there were good ideas, uh, good concepts, and a lot of research. But what was missing, how to make it practical and how to make it in an open collaboration. And in 2019, at the Hannover Fair, it was uh, that uh, BMW and uh, Microsoft announced the, the foundation of the open manufacturing platform. And in, at the beginning of 2020, uh, Bosch, ZF and AB InBev joined because we all shared or had this impression there is something missing. And the open manufacturing platform is really an open source project. It's under the umbre umbrella from the Linux Foundation. So it's the first, in a way, open source project for manufacturing. Um, of course, there were a lot of GitHub repositories. I'm not saying there were no open source, but it's really uh, the first really um, yeah, uh, open source, uh, bigger working group. Um, in 2020, in September, Gaia X was founded. I, I'm sure you also heard of it. Uh, that's a very big European project that uh, is dealing with creating a federated system for exchanging data, and we learned it's about breaking data silos, etc. So we need data exchange. It's not focusing on manufacturing, but it is uh, building the infrastructure. That's why I'm also mentioning, and also Gaia X, of course, has an Eclipse project associated to it. And completely independent of each other, two other organizations were founded in 2020. First, the Digital Twin Consortium in the US. And uh, then in September, the Industrial Digital Twin Association. So for the IDTA, it was clear also from the very beginning that there will be open source, and they just joined the Eclipse Foundation. Uh, for the Digital Twin Consortium, they just announced it this year. So I think they saw the signs of the times um, that without open source, you will not be successful any longer. And um, I mentioned one project here, uh, Catena X, as an e example, a big project also, an example for a domain-specific uh, use case. Uh, and of course, we expect that the results of the other organization can be used there and to fasten the building of new uh, platforms. And Catena X, of course, itself is also, again, an open source project. Just have a look at the Catena X network because I think it's really interesting to see and to understand that if we talk about uh, digital, digital transformation, it's always about looking at the complete life cycle. And here we have the life cycle of a car in a way. So it starts, of course, uh, in the value chain are, of course, the OEMs like BMW, the tiers, the suppliers like, like Bosch, tier one, two, three, but a lot of different uh, and additional suppliers if you take the complete value chain. But there are also completely other partners like, uh, the, of course, the production partners, mobility partners, but also recycling partners. So it's really the complete life cycle that is covered. And so what it is all about, this, all of these partners want 
or need to exchange data. So this is what uh, we are aiming for, how to enable data exchange in such a, a network in an open and transparent way. Okay, so it was not uh, um, uh, by chance that I mentioned two organizations that focus on digital twins, um, the digital twin uh, industrial digital twin association and the DTC. And why are digital twins so important? So first, I said data needs to be exchanged. So the first thing is to think about which data to exchange, and you also need to understand the meaning of the data you exchange. Otherwise, it will not help. So if you just exchange 4,370 and don't know that it's rotation per minute and it's the uh, rotation speed, you don't know anything about the number, so it's just raw data. You need information. The next thing is, you probably, if you are part of such an ecosystem, you don't want to share your data with everybody, So, but you don't need to be afraid of this because, that's again, digital twins enable to access data. Nobody is accessing your data directly. The data is accessed via the digital twin and access control is established there as well. And the last thing, and I think it was really what Julian stressed at the very beginning, it needs to be scalable. And uh, that's a very important yeah, um, fun non-functional requirement for digital twins that they fulfill. They are scalable from, yeah, not only uh, with respect to what they support, so you can add models every time in the life cycle, but also you can have one twin, but you can also have millions of twins. And that's the scalable solution, and that's why I think digital twins are such an attractive uh, concept for uh, open manufacturing. Yeah, so I could talk for hours for digital twin, who knows me, <laughs> but unfortunately we don't have the time. And so perhaps uh, um, we come in a way to a conclusion and also to the results of our poll, perhaps. Um, yeah, Julian, what, what do you say? What, what is the main takeaway for our audience? Uh, yeah, our the, the main takeaway from my point of view is be open to open source. Yes. Um, I think that's something um, also we had to learn and a lot of companies, from my point of view, have to learn. Um, so if, if you also have use cases in, mm. in your company, um, join the consortium which is the most suitable for you. Um, and also participate there or be just a consumer. Um, of course, depends on which phase you are. Um, and yeah, and also to help the other companies to drive things forward um, and to really as, uh, enable scalability and so on. Yes. Yeah, and of course, we would like to have a, a look um, at our poll and the results we got there. Um, already? <laughs> I think we need a second there. Um, first, uh, maybe something I, I can add. Um, so if you're uh, interested, for example, in joining um, the Open Manufacturer platform, just uh, Google it. Um, <laughs> contact one of us. <laughs> or can contact one of us. Um, I can, I'm sure we can lead you to the current persons. Um, so we can find a lot of uh, results and also more information online. Yeah, so we, we got the poll results. Um, they're really interesting. Um, so already more than 50% uh, has already uh, open manufacturing on, on their agenda. So I think that's quite, quite a good number. Um, no, but it will be in the future. 36% I think also really impressive and, and more than 12% uh, is complete no. Um, but I think we all have a... Um, <laughs> they will change their mind after they, they will change their mind afterwards and we already have a really open community out there. Thank you very much. So, now I think uh, if there are questions, we are very happy to answer them. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so perhaps uh, one of the questions, Julian, um, why do you think BMW or the question is also Bosch, but uh, why um, are you engaging in OMP and which benefits do you have? I think we talked about it, but perhaps you can yeah. <laughs> repeat it again a little bit. Yeah, so um, looking back when, when we started OMP, uh, we saw also in discussions with other companies that a lot of people are solving the same problems mm -hmm. um, regarding connectivity, regarding data models, regarding okay, how should our architecture in general look like. Um, and from our point of view, a lot of these problems are not 
differentiating us. Um, mm -hmm. So that's not the BMW core values. Yes. Um, so that that's why we said, okay, um, let's let's find some other uh, forces out there. And that's that's why we joined for forces. Um, I think we have a bit more than thirty companies right now in the OMP. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, that that's, that was the reason. Um, and of course, what what benefits do we see? Um, of course, we are speeding up also our internal projects. Mm -hmm. um, really get the benefits we want to have out of them, mm -hmm. um, and also uh, use the collaborative uh, development and so on um, to, to, to enable that. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> exactly. Um, yeah, that's then only one question I might try to answer. Mm -hmm. It's going back in the it's more the personal view, not the uh, company view. Why, why, uh, why what, how, and why did you start opting and lobbying for open standards fairs? And um, and I think uh, so for a big company like Bosch, uh, I have a long history at Bosch. So at the beginning, nobody talked about open source. Oh my God, you can't even not use it. So I think this is changing dramatically. And uh, of course, one of my um, now. Uh, Experience was that in Catena X it was very, very fast to set up a POC because we just use the results of the open manufacturing platform and also from other from Gaia X and YDS. So a lot of open source was available and you were you are just faster. And uh, I think also specifications and standards without support of open source will not be as successful. So only with open source support both together and this will make it successful. Yeah, completely agree. Yeah, I think we are uh, a little bit faster than that's expected, but yeah. uh, we don't have any new questions. So if anybody has still a question, please feel free also to chat with us in, in the system. Or Just contact us afterwards. Yes, we are LinkedIn, awesome. exactly. Yeah. So yeah, thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much. <laughs>